Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Average Beast Jerry. My name is Average Bulb and last video we redeemed the frog and amphibian race with the peaceful and playful Tuflane, created a new and slightly sinister uh, monster ne lurking beneath your feet in the antlion and finally wrapped it all up with the bonus beast in the peaceful yet destructive reflector golem. In today's video things get a bit more strange from trolls that can only troll like creatures that can only be described as nerds to a parasitic acidic blood leeching monstrosity that has a with a slightly more dark magical twist and all of that on top of today's bonus beast which can only be described as well weird before we start today's video i have a couple of brief announcements First of all, the uh, the average uh, Beast Jerry series does take a bit more time than the average video, um, so no, uh, pun not intended. But if it's been a while before I po uh, since I post another thing, that's probably because I'm working on a new one. Secondly, you guys are so flipping supportive. I was completely blown away by the amount of views that my last video got, and I got like ten subscribers in one day. So if you're one of those viewers or subscribers, then thank you so much. This channel would not be possible without your support. The first creature for today's video is the thuggish humanoid soldiers, the Grumnodge. It was said that the first Grumnodge conquerors entered the Underdog hundreds of years ago, and since then they have not left, establishing small castles and outposts and slaying hundreds and hundreds of monsters lurking in the Underdog's depths. However, now that those conquerors are bones lay deep in the soil or have just turned to dust, then those other monsters do not really want to challenge the Grumnodge uh, race's power or attempt to loot their, their outpost or cities. Sadly, as the Grumnodge are trained sol I've been trained to be soldiers from a very young age, the lack of battle makes their life a tiny bit uneventful, and no other job options really exist in the Grumnodge community. As the Grumnodge wait at their outpo their posts, waiting for a battle that will probably never happen, or waiting for some random monster to stagger up. They began establishing little games to play in the meantime. Dice games, gambling, uh, card games, board games, etc. Just to pass the time. The Grumnodge are soldiers are still very protective of their outposts and cities. If you wander into them, maybe, maybe decide to play cards instead of fighting. I launched the idea that maybe you should play a board game or a dice game instead because as much as Grumnodge um, crave battle, they crave new and original games mo uh, more as long as they are fairly easy to learn. However, do be wary because although it is dangerous to engage a... Uh, forgot the name there for a minute. Grumnodge, right. Sorry, that's embarrassing. Anyway, as it is danger dangerous to engage a Grumnodge in actual physical combat, it is also fairly dangerous to engage it in a game of wit, as it may end up being dangerous if you, um, if you, um, are, are a bit too rude or uncareful, uh, or not very careful with your win, it will, it'll probably perceive it as a threat or... A insult and might end up fighting you anyway. The Grumnodge is a moderately good fighter, a moderately good um, opponent for, and a moderately good opponent for the beginner, uh, the beginner player. However, it and and it's also a pretty good opportunity for the DM to interact and role play with its their players. Any of this sound interesting to you? Well, here here are the stats. I'll flash them up on the screen. There you go. Hey, I didn't even whistle that time. 
Anyway, for the next creature, the next creature is known as the Blood Mumble. And fair warning for those people that are a bit squirmish and don't, or have like a phobia of blood, or just don't like bugs in general, you might want to skip to this time on the screen because this one is a little unsettling. The Blood Mumble is. A, a type of parasite, as said before, it is an aberration, is classified as an aberration, and it is after blood. With a bonus in stealth, this creature can easily sneak onto any adventurer and latch onto them, hopefully without them noticing. For When biting, it only deals one necrotic damage, however, it does have the additional effect that as long as it's c it continues to bite and gr uh, latch on to its victim, every uh, they uh, that victim gains one level of exhaustion every hour. While this effect might seem a little overpowered, it also has the same effect to give the, the, its victim insomnia or just sleeplessness, meaning that they, they won't just go to bed and then wake up dead the next morning, or just not wake up at all, at all essentially. So, while this, like, little bulgy-eyed uh, bulgy cuttlefish meets tick uh, sticks, on to, uh, sticks onto your side, it also gives off one final nasty effect in the effect Bloodlust. If the character has been bitten for several hours and is fairly, or is just fairly exhausted, then they will begin feeling the small craving for blood, preferably some, like, fresh blood from other humanoids. This vampiric tendency means that not only does, do, does the, um, does the blood mumble have an infinite supply, hopefully infinite supply of food, but it also means that the blood mumble ha doesn't have to move for days on end to constantly feed itself. So, players, victims, do with that what you will. It definitely gives you some role-playing opportunities. Now, with that more gross section out of the way, the, the Blood Mumble does have a couple other properties, mainly for those people that looked at, those few people out there that looked at it and went, "Oh, it's kind of cute. Well, I did actually th uh, kind of agree with you on that, so I threw in the fact that it is a weirdly good familiar, as long as it's fed well. So, that should be interesting. It is a familiar usually preferred by warlocks, since it is maybe one of the only aberration familiars, so do with that what you will. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the video. Once again, let's get to today's bonus beast. Today's bonus beast is the Bellowstock Weird. For before we get in, right into the its stats and the creation of the Bellowstock Weird, we need a little bit of a backstory. The first weird that you found probably found in the entirety of the D and D universe is the Water Weird found in the Monster Manual. This serpentine water snake is an elemental by by nature and is usually an ambusher and is decently strong. However, there are no other traces of any other so-called weirds in the entirety of D&D until Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, in which there are, like, the Blister Coil Weird, the Gallivance Weird, and this demonic angel electric thing. Yup. However, the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica got me thinking in itself, as certain guilds in, the, in Ravnica are de and use science and actual technology instead of magic to do everyday things. Sure, they summon things like elementals, but they rely more on science and even genetic altering, and there's even various stats for monsters who have been created through this process. So it doesn't seem impossible that one of these scientific, more scientific guilds would, instead of relying on simple elementals, create the ultimate guardian, one that can think for itself and develop more uh, more than the average elemental. Enter the Bellowstock Weird. The, and no longer made of just simple elemental matter, the Bellowstock Weird is a plant by nature. It, it is an enormous 
plant. It was ba ba mostly based on the pitcher plant, and I started with more of a cat-like approach, then went to maybe a dragon, then finally ended up with the octopus, lovely kraken or slash octopus scene here. The Bellowstock weird is a strange weird by, uh, par uh, uh, paradoxically, by uh, any means. But as it is actually made of living matter, it is able to develop and adapt to situations. However, being a plant gives it certain disadvantages, such as the fact that it is literally rooted in place. The only way it can move is quite a strange one, by basically killing itself off and then regrowing itself up to 20 feet away, so making it slow and kind of unreliable. However, since it is basically sprouting itself again, it does regain a couple of hit points in this way. But it doesn't really need to move much after all, as it's able to use its enormous root like tent uh its uh tentacle like roots that is to just uh, smash and bash foes. However, it's not maybe maybe not the most devastating, but definitely dangerous attack is its a war cry which it uh, g thus giving its its name the bellowstock weird all like um all like orifices um like you know the weird like openings you know yeah you, you get you get the drift um be emitting like a horrifying screeching sound that can deafen any nearby things dealing thunder damage the Bellowstock Weird is adaptable, yes, but it's definitely nowhere close to sentient, as it's still forced to obey its creators, and it will not protect itself necessarily, it will be more interested in fighting to the death than hastily retreating, or using its, like, uh, like, um, uh, death and regrowth j on teleport jump kind of thing to heal itself, it will just go in there with all limbs flailing and destroy anything it comes near. There is only one disadvantage to your having your stuff guarded by a Bellowstock weird, other than its size, and that is, well, the re death and regrowth jump itself. If it uses this to, uh, for too long, and it probably will since they li uh, live hundreds of years, then then the very genetic makeup that it makes it will alter very slightly, meaning that it's possible the, gene the genetic makeup forcing it to obey its masters might shift ever so slightly, making it far more independent, powerful, and feral. Uh, wi wild uh, Bellowstock weirds no longer domesticated are a dangerous encounter indeed and are far more likely to use their death regrowth jump things with nothing to protect. Overall, it's a pretty good big boss battle and could be used in a lot of situations, as it is only the, un mostly under the control of its masters, or could be an independent one in the wild. If this sounds interesting to you and you'd like to add this in your campaign, or just check out its stats, here are those stats. Hope you got those, and sorry, not on foresight, I think I might have forgotten the blood mumble stats, so I'll flash those up just in case I, uh, my future self forgets the, the, um, to play, uh, put them down while I'm blabbering on about it, and the, that parasite thing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope it was as good as the last one. And I hope you'd like to see more in the future. So if you're interested in future uh, um, average beast Jerry's, then I'd really like to get five likes once again or more. And in the meantime, this is Average Bulb signing off.